Good afternoon. It is 1019 on a Friday. This is kind of an impromptu thing. So we'll see how it works. If I like it, I'll post it. If not, you won't see it. My name is Kyle Lankford. I am the evangelist at the South End Church of Christ, and I'm at the South End Church of Christ building currently. So uh, earlier this week, we had a slight problem with the baptistry. Uh, there was some uh, really tiny tears in the liner, the, the painted on liner that goes in in a pool or, or something along that lines. And it was seeping. It was, there was getting trapped water in between the liner and the baptistry frame. And it was holding uh, bacteria and other different stuff and it would seep out this dirty water. Now they're, they were tiny. They were really small, uh, but you could see them once the water was clean. Once you clean the water, uh, drained it and you filled it a little bit back up and you move around in there, you see the water uh, coming out and where it, it's located. So the only thing you could do is completely drain the baptistry. You had to get all the water out. You had to get the water out and you had to get access to the things that were causing a problem. Then you had to fix it. You had to, I came in here and I, I put some sealant on it. And it was a little bit tedious job, but, uh, you know, it had to be done right. And so I put the sealant on there and, and sealed up these little cracks, prevented uh, the bad stuff from getting out of uh, the spaces it wasn't supposed to be and into the spaces uh, that was supposed to be uh, sealed off and protected from contaminants. Then once I finally got it done, uh, I had to wait for it to cure. And then I was able to reseal it with fresh, clean water in there. And then uh, put some chlorine in there to keep it nice and clean. And it made me think of the spiritual applications. Now, one, uh, the reason why we go through such efforts to maintain and keep a baptistry uh, inside the, the building at our location is because baptism is part of God's plan of salvation. In Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch said, See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And he said that after Philip the evangelist preached Jesus unto him. And then Philip said, nothing, nothing can prohibit you from being baptized as long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he made that confession. And then after confessing, they went down into the water, both Philip uh, and the eunuch. And then they came up out of the water. And when they came up out of the water, Philip was carried away by the Spirit. And the Ethiopian went his way rejoicing. Why did he go his way rejoicing? Well, because he knew that his sins were forgiven him. Again, if you read uh, in one of the accounts of um, the Apostle Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 22, verse 16, he was told, why are you waiting or tarrying? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. So let's make some parallels here to the baptistry and what I had to do here, what we had to do here at South End and to our lives. Well, Here's the issue. When you sin, like in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. When you sin, uh, you, you're dirty, you're unclean, and you need to be uh, separated from God. God cannot be in the presence of sin. And so one of the things we're commanded to do after hearing the word, and we believe the word, uh, then we have to repent. Okay, You have to repent. You have to leave the sins that you're in. Sometimes that means you have to drain some things out of your system. Uh, it means that you need to make a purge, that you need to uh, get away from the sinful things that you've once been engaged in and you didn't see a problem with, but now you've opened your eyes, you've been exposed to the light, you've exposed these things to the light, and you see that they're darkness, that they're unclean, and you need to get rid of them. That can take some effort. It can take some work. 
but now in the process of converging, uh, conversion, you just need to know that they're wrong and then turn away from that and turn towards God. And then, you, you know, you got to go through the process of getting over your sins, uh, putting them all away. Uh, that can take some work. Uh, sometimes you might have some cracks. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, we're told to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, as a soldier, you know, your armor, you're always improving it. You're always trying to make it better. You're always trying to harden your facilities, uh, harden your areas. Um, so that is important because you're trying to keep the enemy out. You're trying to keep them from getting access to uh, your vital uh, spaces. In the case of your body armor, your vital organs. So once you get the stuff out, then you, you have to patch it. You have to clean it. You have to prepare it and, and patch it. And so that's what we did here with the baptistry. And that's what you're going to do with your life. If you hear the gospel, the gospel is good news. It absolutely is. That's what it means, literally, good news. The good news is God loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son that no one should perish, but all should have everlasting life. That's John chapter 3, verse 15. Uh, that's great. But it also means that we are in our sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter in the first sermon after Christ's ascension said, Repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of sins. Why, what do they have to repent of? Well, they are responsible for Christ's death. We all are. If you sinned, you're partially responsible. So going back to that good news, in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, earlier in John, was told that everyone needed to be reborn. And that's, that's the great thing. And you can see that in Galatians chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 3, when we put on Christ in baptism, when we put on Christ in baptism, we become heirs. We become descendants of faithful Abraham. Just like he was a child of God through faith, so will we be. Uh, in Genesis chapter 16, uh, we have the Abraham was given the, the covenant of circumcision. And we see that baptism in Colossians is also a circumcision. It's a covenant, and it's a circumcision made without human hands. I might submerge you into the water of baptism. But it's Christ. It's Christ that's circumcising your heart. He's the one cutting out the sins. He's the one cutting out that dead uh, flesh, so to speak, the old man that you can read about in Romans chapter 6. In Romans chapter 6, we see that baptism is also significant uh, because it is a not only a death and burial, but a resurrection uh, in the similitude of Christ in the same way that he was resurrected from the dead. So uh, I hope that this is uh, an encouraging message to you. Uh, if you like it, uh, please give it the thumbs up or whatever you do for your specific uh, uh, method of, of video streaming, whether this is Facebook or YouTube or gets shared anywhere. These videos, uh, they're not monetized at all. We don't monetize videos, and they're free. You can take anything that I say, and you can share it. You can repost it. I don't care. I just want the gospel out. And if you think that this message would be helpful for others, send it to them. Uh, share it. Uh, that's, how the, that's how the gospel works, is we share it. We have the good news, and we share it. And the good news is that at the South End Church of Christ, our baptistry is now fully operational. And we can baptize you and we can wash away your sins. Uh, now, it's not me that's doing it. It is Christ that's doing it. But we have the facilities uh, that Christ can use. Uh, and again, if there are sins in your life, well, you need, to, you need to do some introspection. You need to look at that. You need to see where they're getting in. And that goes for Christians as well. Sometimes... Uh, again, keep this um, analogy of the baptistry going. Sometimes after you obey the gospel, in fact, every time after you obey the gospel, you're going to go back into sin. You're going to make some mistakes. And in doing so, you need to, to write it. And in ignoring it, 
going, oh, look, uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to acknowledge this dirty water in my container. Uh, I'm not going to acknowledge all this bad stuff in here. It doesn't make it go away. In fact, if you say that you're not a sinner, you make God a liar, as you can read about in 1 John uh, chapter 1. And so we confess our sins one to another. And that's also another function of the church, is we're not a, we're not a collection of perfect people. We're a collection of sinners that have been redeemed, sinners that have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it. That's what makes us special. It's not me. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. And so if you're living a life and you're like, ah, I'm letting some stuff seep in. I'm letting some of these old sins seep in, or new sins, sins that I wasn't even uh, bothered with before, but I am now. Well, sometimes you need to drain. You need to get that stuff out of your life. You need to make a purge. And then you need to patch it up. You need to patch up your spiritual armor. You need to make sure it doesn't get back in. And you do that by reading the Word. you got to fill up your vessel. We're chosen vessels. You can read about that in Corinthians. But we're chosen vessels. Okay, And the gospel, the Spirit of God, dwells in us. We're His house. We're His temple. And when we fill it up with uh, the clean, refreshing, renewing, word, there's not much space for other things uh, to get in there. So anyways, uh, I hope this short little message is beneficial to you. I hope it's helpful. If you have any questions about it, please, in whatever medium that you're watching this, post it in the comments. Uh, send us an email. And uh, again, I hope that you have a wonderful day. And I hope God is a part of your life and sin isn't. Uh, but if it is, know that you're, you're like the rest of us. Uh, and Christ died for all of us. And he loves you and he wants to forgive you of your sins. And we can help that. Baptism is an essential part of that. But living with God the rest of your life, faithful unto death, that you can read about in Revelation 2, verse 10, is also an important thing. And we'd love to help you in your journey and remaining faithful to God as well. Whatever your need may be, I love you. My name's Kyle Lankford, and I'm signing off.